Hey everybody, this is Andy from Tennis Euphoria and today I'm bringing you my review of the Prince Phantom 100X 16 by 18. So I've got lots of rackets to review at the moment, new Pure Drive coming up, we'll get to look at the new Pro Staff, also have the uh, Technofiber 305 RS and also the Yonex E-Zone Tour on the list at the moment, so subscribe if you want to see those reviews moving forward, but I expedited this review of this print because really it's quite interesting isn't it um, over the pond it's always getting great reviews and as i understand it prince is uh, doing pretty well in the us here in the uk and i suspect across europe prince doesn't have as sort of bigger scope and reach sort of rarely see recreational players using prince rackets anymore despite their great history and heritage but as a self-confessed racket geek, I really appreciate what they try to do with their rackets. They sort of take risks. I love rackets like the uh, 93P um, as a bit different, but never, I suppose, have I seen a racket that I thought could be switchable for a lot of people uh, until this prints, the um, Phantom 100X 16x18. So this replaces the Phantom Pro 100s, which uh, I had hit with. I do also own one of those. Um, I actually own the 1820 and the previous 16 by 18. Uh, really like them, I mean, they had a unique feel, a sort of soft, buttery, plush feel. And I feel that they almost kind of represent what the gravity was sort of trying to do but they just lacked a little bit of punch certainly were never close to being switchable they were just kind of interesting so in this update it's quite interesting to see some of the new technology and the specs with the x version in the x we have a new design which i think looks really cool we also have a thicker beam so maybe some more punch there we also have Techstream and Tworon, uh, that magic Tworon, which has been uh, of great success in old head rackets. So that's really of interest to me. And the placement of those two materials is quite interesting. You have it down in the throat and then also at the top of the racket at sort of 10 and two, kind of, I guess, typical places where you would look to improve plow through so maybe the feedback has been listened to and we have a racket with a bit more plow and punch looking at the specs we have still very thin beam but a bit thicker we have that really interesting 16 by 18 string pattern 305 grams unstrung so no drastic changes with regards to spec but let's see how that tour on and the material placement of the tech stream affects how it plays and my first casual hit with it was kind of pretty promising it obviously has that really low ra it's exceptionally comfortable it is a really smooth playing racket from the baseline it's got that very kind of buttery feel you do feel very connected to the ball gives you great feedback uh, i was feeling that the stability had been improved on that first hit from the baseline uh, but i was still noticing that with that quite unique sort of 16 by 18 string pattern you are getting good potential for spin uh, but certainly with my technique and my mechanics all that really does is kind of give you a good launch angle and it brings the ball down relatively quickly so my initial thoughts were that you know will i still need a little bit more plow and how will the racket be from a kind of depth generation perspective Perspective. Second hit and after spending a bit more time with it from both sides kind of surprised me in terms of some of its characteristics both on sort of forehand and backhand so in terms of the positives I thought the racket actually performs pretty well when it comes to slice and that's a good thing I often think an open pattern isn't quite as good as a dense pattern when it comes to hitting a nice cutting slice also I do think the racket is quite nice from the baseline from a stability perspective I was also finding that the maneuverability combined with that string pattern meant that you can cut 
some really nice angles and also with that sort of 16 by 18 pattern it is more precise than you would expect so in the context of kind of control I would say that it is surprisingly good when it comes to control but mainly with regards to precision uh, in terms of direction of your shot and then after hitting some baseline points I suppose the thoughts that have been generated from the first and second hit were kind of true the only thing I was finding was that actually I was finding depth to be a little bit of an issue for me and when I was playing against a really good hitting partner it was becoming pretty evident that the kind of cut down on the um, ball that you get from that 16-18 pattern uh, meant that for me and with my technique the ball was landing a little bit short it was kind of cutting the ball and bringing it down into the court um, relatively short enabling my opponent who's a really good player much better than me to get on those balls pretty effectively so that led me to wanting to sort of play around a little bit with strings and also maybe a little bit of lead to add a bit of the plow through that I thought could still improve the racket and then playing with it a little bit more, I guess my feelings were being solidified about the racket. My kind of go-to practice session with one of my hitting partners, Jamie, our second serve routine. You hit second serves, follow in from the second serve, try and hit a volley. It's good practice for doubles that we play together occasionally. I was finding that the racket was pretty precise on serve, so that was good. I could hit quite a nice second serve sort of into the body. But actually when it came to kick, surprisingly, I felt again there wasn't too much there. Uh, I also was finding on first serves in a little bit of match play that that was the case as well. It still felt a little bit lightweight, just like the uh, Phantom Pro 100 did. So I certainly felt that to make this racket um, really, really good, it would need a little bit of help and a little bit of customization. I did play around with that and I don't think that I really arrived at what was best with it to be honest. So in one I have a string that I'm growing to really like and babble at RPM power and I didn't customise that frame. I actually really liked that string within the racket from a control point of view and it is a relatively powerful poly um, so that was good and then in the other I had a Selinko Hyper G strung up I actually didn't string this I bought this strung with Selinko Hyper G so kept that both were at uh, 52 pounds and then lead is across 12 o'clock as you could see here now I did feel that that helped the plow a little bit with uh, that racket however I didn't feel that it was the sort of magic answer I think that if you are looking at this racket it might need a little bit of help perhaps at 12 and also 3 and 9 I think the tech stream and the Toron located at 10 and 2 uh, is helpful but still 3, 9 and 12 small amounts of lead would really add to this racket and maybe in future uh, updates we might see some of the tech stream and Toron around more of the racket which could make it much better so in summary then you definitely should check it out for a demo and i think the this racket and prince rackets generally are a little bit underrated and i think that if they had more players on tour endorsing them more of us europeans and brits would probably be buying them outside of kind of racket geeks like me who just like to add to our collections i think in this uh, 100X, there is great potential. It does need some customization. It plays lovely from the baseline. It does have that sort of comfortable, but also quality and feel laden response on the string bed. You can certainly hit some really nice feel and touch shots when the ball isn't coming at you with huge pace. I think stability can be improved with some of that customization and I did find that if a ball was coming at you at net first volley was a little bit of a problem but from the baseline the racket actually does play pretty well it's good for returning serves it's also good for hitting some nice angles and I think if you really take some time to gel with the racket and learn to sort of create that depth then you could have quite a weapon on your hands particularly with customization I am left wishing that the string pattern was different, if I'm honest. I think that this racket with a 1619 or a 1620 string pattern would be brilliant. I also think if it was uh, just made a little bit heavier, 
kind of 310 unstrung with that string pattern, that would be just perfect. And in that, I think uh, that's where, for me, prints get it a little bit wrong at the moment. You either have uh, the two extremes, really. You have the um, 320, 1820 version of this racket, which clearly is gonna appeal to really only advanced players. Then you have this racket that could appeal to everybody else, but the string pattern, I think, is just probably a little bit too open. And because you do have that really nice thin beam that gives you great feel, it does mean that it still lacks that little bit of punch um, when it has that string pattern in it and no customization. So a little bit like the 93P with the 14 by 18 or the 18 by 20, you kind of just wishing that there was something in the middle with it, which would be just super awesome. However, I did really enjoy it. It's definitely worth a demo if you're pretty good at customizing. I think you could have good fun with this. It is super comfortable and it does just play really, really nicely. I just wonder whether you'll be able to play particularly effectively with it next to other options on the market at the moment. Hope you enjoyed the review. Please subscribe to the channel as that really helps me to look at other rackets and keep new content coming out for you. See you soon.